Welcome to our review on new medicines. First thing to consider is where did all of these drugs and medications that we have available to us today actually come from? And where will the drugs of the future come from? What we tend to find is that the majority of drugs actually come from plant extracts. These days we're also capable of just creating drugs in the lab based on creating certain chemical structures. Now, the way that we actually do this is we can use computer models to develop these possible drugs. So the computer software produces a list of compounds that may target a certain condition. Once we've identified a potential drug using that computer modeling software, then we'll actually carry out tests in the lab to see how it behaves. And these are called preclinical tests. So they will include three different stages. We've got the live cells, we've got bacteria, and we've got tissue culture tests. What we actually find at this stage is that most drugs actually fail at this preclinical test stage, either because they're damaging the cells, which is not a great thing to have happen with something that you want to make people feel better, or they just don't do what we thought they would. When we find a drug that passes the preclinical trial, then it moves on to the next stages in testing. The first one of these is animal testing. And what we now have are rules that state it's got to pass with two species before human trials can actually commence. Obviously not everyone agrees with animal testing, but for those people who think that we should be allowed to test drugs on animals to allow us to develop new drugs for humans, then we abide by what's called the three R's principle, which is reduction, refinement and replacement. So this means that we're going to use the smallest number of animals possible, reduction. We improve experiments to avoid any unnecessary suffering and make sure that we've improved the care of the animals while they're in the trial. That's the refinement stage. And then the replacement is where possible we've replaced the use of animals with other techniques like cell cultures. Assuming our drug then passes the animal trials on two different species, then it will move on to the clinical trials, which is where the drug will be tested on humans. And there are three stages to the clinical trial. First one is using healthy volunteers. If it passes that, we go on to a small sample of about a few hundred volunteers that do have the condition. If it passes that, we go on to the third one, which is a large number of volunteers so several thousand people who do have the condition. Each one of those steps in our clinical trial has a different purpose. So the first thing we do with the healthy volunteers is to look for any side effects. Obviously, we don't want to be giving a medication to someone who's already unwell with something that could make them feel an awful lot worse. So healthy volunteers to identify any side effects. The small volunteer sample is then used to see how effective the drug actually is. And then the large volunteer group is used to test number one for effectiveness, but also to check for safety because it gives us a much wider pool of people to see what else is going on at the time they're taking that drug. If we assume our drug has managed to get through all of these checks and trials, then it's going to be approved by a regulatory agency called the MHRA or Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. But that's still not the end of the story because even after approval, the drug is then monitored in case of any unexpected side effects when it goes to mass production and being used by the mass population. What we've got here is just a little summary about those steps in the development of a new drug. So we start off with the computer models and the human cells grown in the lab. But remember, that's the stage that many drugs fail because they will damage the cells or they don't seem to work as intended. If it does pass that, it goes on to the animal testing phase, just to check for any side effects there. If it passes the animal testing phase, we go on to the healthy human volunteers to make sure that there are no untoward side effects. Then we go on to the small number of volunteer patients to check it actually works and then to the large number of volunteer patients to check the effectiveness, safety, side effects and work out any fine details on the dosage. 
Only after all of that will the drug be approved and then be able to be prescribed by doctors. There is a term that we need to know the meaning of, which is the placebo effect. So when we refer to the placebo effect, what we're talking about is the fact that people can start to feel better because they expect to feel better, even though they're not receiving any kind of proper medication. So what we find is that in order to overcome the placebo effect, we use something called a double blind trial. So in a double blind trial, some patients get the actual drug that we're testing, while others get an exact replica. So it will look identical. There's no way to tell them apart, except it doesn't contain any active ingredients. So that's the placebo. Now, what we find in our double blind trial is that neither the doctor nor the patients are told who receives the placebo and who receives the actual drug, because that means there can be no bias then from either the doctor who's running the study or from the patients sitting there thinking they feel better when in reality they may not. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe how new medicines are discovered. You can describe how we develop those new medicines for human use, and you can also describe how to perform a double blind trial.